Our man City in crisis. It's the first time City under Guardiola have lost back-to-back -back games in the league since December 2018. With the international break, it's a massive opportunity for City to regroup. And as a City fan, for me to address uh, what I've seen from, from my side uh, in the last few weeks. Obviously, really disappointing loss to Wolves. Uh, really disappointing loss to Newcastle in the League Cup. And then Arsenal. It's actually three in a row domestically. Obviously, a great win in Leipzig. Uh, we, we almost beat them every single year, with all due respect. Um, so, there are causes for concern. I think in this video, it would be really interesting to break down a few of my observations, a few individual players that I think are not performing in the right way. Uh, whether it's their fault or Guardiola's system, we will discuss that. But very keen to see what you think in the comments down below. And obviously, make sure you subscribe to the channel. would really appreciate that. The overview for me is that this City side are in a real transition. Um, every club is always signing players. So I guess on some level, every club is in transition. But, but this City side... You know, I've never experienced it. I've never experienced City winning a treble, obviously. N not many clubs ever do. The, the fall-off after that, could it have been, been managed if the likes of Riyad Mahrez, Laporte, Ilkay Gundogan were all kept at the club for continuity with maybe one or two getting uh, sort of phased out versus, you know, three, four of them? That is a debate because this City side looks very, very new. And without the continuity of John Stones, Ruben Diaz and or Rodri, um, what I've seen in the last few games is a side really devoid of Guardiola characteristics, a side unsure whether to keep the ball at the right time or whether to drive with it, be adventurous. Um, and there are, some, there are some moments, it's not an individual criticism of Doku, big fan of Doku, I think he'd be very, very good in the future. But there's a, mo there's a few moments where he loses the ball about two or three times. Um, I think it's against Wolves. It might have been Newcastle, either one. It might be a, a, he played a lot of football. Uh, but in a couple of games, he loses the ball about three or four times, running at the, at the fullback within the space of, of, of five, ten minutes while we're chasing a game. And that is so un-Guardiola-like. So un-Guardiola-like. Um, it's the kind of... It's the kind of stuff that, that he would absolutely despise in his players. That he want he wants his wingers to retain possession if he can't guarantee beating the fullback. So for me, that alludes to a large issue at City, where our City are counter-attacking side with four centre backs that mop up play and feed it into Doku, feed it into Nunes, who you can drive from midfield, Kovacic, uh, Alvarez, who's playing a lot of football. Our City, a side that wants to dominate possession and get on the ball and knock it around and, and be beautiful on it. I think Kovacic was signed for that. I think Nunes was signed for that. Rodri is obviously still a massive uh, part of that. And it feels like City are caught between two minds because against Arsenal, I don't think we were, we were particularly defensively rigid. Uh, it felt like City had slightly more of the ball. So if we're going to say, right, we're in that kind of ballpark. City are a, a possession-based side. We're going to try and pin teams back like we have for the last six, seven years. It's remarkable how well we've done it for the last six, seven years. But then there are certain moments where you just think Nunes lost the ball. Kovacic was was a little bit flat on the ball. Everything went side to side. Everything everything went backwards. Now, obviously, City fans will sit, say there, you know, sit there and say De Bruyne's injured. Uh, Rodri's got the red card. So it's kind of the footballers that are able to pin the ball over the top make incisive passes between the lines. Those players just aren't there. And I'd say that that's not true. Because I think a massive factor that you know leads on to my second kind of point is, you know, Nunes has been brought in and almost entrusted to do things that Phil Foden can do. And that's what really frustrates me uh, about Guardiola in the last few weeks with Phil Foden. He knows his player better than me. But I'm just a humble fan that watches a lot of football, probably too much football. Um, and I, I just think, Phil Foden has got this incredible ability of being able to drive with the ball, keep possession, and give it off to other people, especially from midfield. And it's the kind of talent that is very, very rare. Uh, very, very rare. It's a David Silva, Iniesta vibe. And he's, and he's English. It's an incredible talent for him to have. But there are, there are points against Arsenal where Nunes was playing, and, he, and even against Wolves when he started that game. And you think, why is Nunes play, playing in this position when Phil Foden should be playing in this position? I don't get it. You can't sit here and say Nunes has come from Real Madrid, Barcelona. He's come from Wolves. So he's doing it at a much lower level with all due respect to Nunes. I'm not trying to pin one on Nunes. I think he's a great player, a very talented, uh, multifaceted player. But clearly Guardiola doesn't trust Phil Foden to be able to 
drive the ball from midfield, carry it when he needs to, spray balls around, pop up around midfield and link up play. He doesn't trust Phil Foden to do that. And it makes no sense to me. And it actually really frustrates me because I think he's wrong. I mean, who am I to say, sat here, uh, doing a, a video on YouTube about if Guardiola, the great Gu Gu Guardiola, is wrong. But there's a, a lack of trust there. There's a lack of trust. I don't know why Phil Foden's being played left wing, right wing. And then again, and then against these, you know, the Arsenal's of the world this season, the Wolves is, he's been ineffectual. He's been really ineffectual, and I think, I think Guardiola's kind of issues with him, his lack of trust in him. I think there is a, a clear lack of trust. Has actually made that when Phil Foden does a pop up, pop up into these positions, he's not as instinctive as he used to be. He's not as natural on the ball. You know, when he first arrived on the scene, he'd take, a, he'd take that shot from 25 yards out, 20 yards out, like he did against Dortmund, near post. It was amazing. You know, he, he ran midfield against PSG. He ran midfield against Real Madrid. And that was just all natural ability. And I think Guardiola is completely mistaken what Phil Foden can do. And because of that, it's a bit like the Wayne Rooney effect under Ferguson, because he's so naturally gifted in multiple assets of his game. He's been played everywhere, and I think it's to, to the detriment of not only Phil Foden. This isn't a Phil, Vo, Phil, Phil Foden video, as much as I'd love to be a Phil Foden-only fan channel. This is a Man City channel. This is a Man City fan saying that Man City are worse, and one of our best players, Phil Foden, he's top five of the most naturally gifted players in the league, in my opinion. He's not being used right, and that is, a, on some level, a mini-crisis. Getting a player of his quality into the right positions. Jose Mourinho have never had an issue with, with Joe Cole or Frank Lampard, for example. And Guardiola has a mini issue with Phil Foden, that's my opinion. And then the final thing, it has to be Erling Haaland. Uh, I know City fans will decry me for saying it, but you have to you have to criticise Erling Haaland on some small level. Now, people, I think, take the argument way too far. Certain football fans I know that would kind of say, were they right about um, Haaland in the league? You know, last season he scored 52 goals and 53. It's absolutely mental. So if even if he doesn't score in the FA Cup final, in the Champions League final, that season is history now. It's done. He contributed towards a treble in his first season at his, at his boyhood club. As a kid who's 22, 23 years old, he scored 52 goals to get us there. He's he, he's amazing. He's world class. Against Arsenal, I think he was, he was ineffective. I think he was isolated. I don't think Guardiola has built the system for when Haaland's having a bad game, can Haaland raise the level of other people around him? Thierry Henry, there's a reason he had 20 goals, 20 assists one season. Thierry Henry. Because he was a fantastic striker. If you ever got man marked out the game, look, 20 goals in a league means he, he didn't score for 18 of them. But almost in 20 other games, he got an assist. So uh, Henry could link up play, bring players up, uh, uh, you know, into his kind of his ether, his quality on the ball. And make Freddie Lundberg score goals you might not normally have. Uh, Fre uh, Bergkamp, Robert Perez, even Vieira coming on to things from deep. Let, you know, I'm sure Henri was laying things off to him. Haaland hasn't got that system around him where he's able to affect the game if he himself doesn't score as an individual. And that's something that Guardiola absolutely has to address because there are sides who I think, you know, Liverpool's of the world, going away to Spurs, going away to United very soon. That will be able to do something very similar to what Saliba did, what Joe Gomez did to Haaland last season. Very keen to what you think in the comments down below. Look, City are not in a massive crisis. It's a mini crisis. And you have to sit there and think the quality of the squad will be the proof in the pudding come May. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll see you very, very soon.